so hello everybody this is Ajahn Spencer and with one more podcast this one goes directly with Buddhism and uh, less with freestyle what I like to call quantum dhamma which is uh, the attempt to seek the Dhamma as a universal unconditioned truth instead of through the lens of Buddhism. Um, but this time, uh, this is dealing with the techniques taught purely in Buddhism as a religion or as a, as a set of practices which can be applied. And uh, this one is uh, about one of the parts of the practice which is heard of or encountered uh, in the studies of almost every Buddhist almost from the beginning uh, the term the Eightfold Path is normally encountered so uh, the Eightfold Path is something I believe and I believed myself to have understood, I believe many people think they understand it and think that it is self-explanatory in the way it is listed as eight, a series of eight uh, attitudes or applied methods to have, uh, which it is, but um, it's not as simple as it sounds. So I'd like to go into a deeper analysis of understanding the true meaning of what the Buddha meant by the Eightfold Path. Uh, this particular talk is going to have to be followed with um, a synopsis and discussion or a, a talk on the Dhammavatana Jagna, the turning of the wheel of Dhamma. The turning the Dhamma wheel sermon, the first sermon, the Buddha's first sermon, which explains his enlightenment and what was required to attain that enlightenment, what attainments or what uh, meditative states and further attainments he achieved, which are necessary to achieve the goal of arahantship. So, back to the Eightfold Path. I'll start by listing it. One, samatiti. In chop, uh, the right view, the right attitude, right view. To have the right view of things. To see things as they really are. To know things for how they truly are. Their nature. Uh, one would suppose. So the first samatiti right view, the real meaning, which is hardly ever or never mentioned or explained, means that if you have samatiti right view, means the following: it means you see uh, with your insight, not you have studied and understood theory, but you see and experience the truth, the dhamma of the four noble truths. That uh, took Samutia Nirod Mak uh, the Four Noble Truths Dukkha. All things uh, le- and eventually lead to unsatisfactoriness. Uh, the simple translation for Dukkha is suffering. I don't think that's really a correct translation. Uh, the, the word Dukkha actually means you cannot maintain it in its constantly in the same state in its new condition or in its young state or all things are constantly changing and in flux and so it cannot be maintained or held as one wishes it to remain it is beyond and out of one's reach and control and is therefore a dissatisfactory situation to dukkha that's the first of the four noble truths the second is samutiya uh, if dukkha, if suffering exists, or unsatisfactory, re- repeatedly unsatisfactory uh, 
feeling or state of mind because of the impermanence around us. Uh, all things are impermanent, as, uh, um, and that when we cling to them, uh, and they cease to be, or we have to lose them or let go of them, then it hurts. So dukkha, suffering does arise, or dissatisfaction. Samatiya, if suffering exists, dissatisfaction, all things which come into being also have to meet with cessation, an end. All things which have a beginning also have an end. All things which are born must die. Uh, all mountains must erode into sand and you know, stars will explode. Galaxies will dissolve and even universes will extinguish, start again. That's another story I will maybe talk about one day, about the cyclic universe. That's a big one, that's a long story. It's a series of very long stories, actually. Um, so, the second of the Eightfold Path is Samma Sankapa Dhammi Chop Dhammi Ochakam Dhammi Naikan Mai Payabad Le Dhammi Mai Biet Bien means um, right action uh, to behave and act skillfully and without creating suffering for oneself or for others and to not seek sensual pleasures and not harm other beings not bully, not harm or bother the, th uh, the third of the Eightfold Path Samawaja uh, Right Speech Chiraja Chop Kawenja Waji Tujiritsi the real meaning of right speech means to refrain from the uh, four kinds of wrong speech. There's a Buddhist teaching by the Buddha about the four kinds of wrong speech. So, to have correct speech, one needs to master the practice of abstention of all the four forms of um, inauspicious speech or speech which will cause uh, be the cause of suffering or regret or um, rebirth in samsara and samsaric existence suffering I mean, you are born you will get sick you will get old and you will die so that is right speech the fourth of the Eightfold Path is Sammagamanta. Tamgangan Chop, right profession. Kawin Dagai Tujarit Sam. means to re the real meaning of right profession uh, means refraining from the three. Uh, the three dishonest kinds of behavior or profession or uh, attitudes of profiting. Uh, the fifth of the Eightfold Path, the fifth applied method is to create the causes of and attain the realization of Sama Ativa, ah, this is right profession, sorry, Sama Gamanta means to uh, um, the previous one I just explained, Sama Gamanta means to uh, right action, right action. And, uh, but right action actually means the practice of refraining from various actions which are not right actions or if you want to call it so wrong actions I would call them I don't believe in wrong actions I just believe in skillful and unskillful actions unskillful one lead to regret or 
burdens, men be they mental, be they emotional, be they subconscious or conscious, but they are burdens. All of our actions and words and thoughts and intentions, they reflect our state of mind and our mood and whether we are suffering or tense or stressful in a stressful state or not. So if we are angry with our en enemy, and our enemy might be off having his birthday party or at his daughter's wedding or something, and not be aware of anything so, of suffering or not know about our story, and we can sit there hating and angry with somebody and <laughs> be wronged or feel wronged, but actually, you know, the hate, that's wrong, and, that, and that's not in the, our enemy's mind, it's in our mind. And the anger, that's... Well, I wouldn't say it's wrong, but I would say it's hot like the fires of hell and it doesn't feel good and it's stressful. And that is also not in the body, heart or mind of he who we feel has wronged us. It's in ours. And so all we are doing is uh, creating chimeras, uh, imaginary uh, baggage containing suffering for free. And we're trailing it around with us, basically. So... Right action means to avoid the three kinds of uh, wrong behavior, let's say wrong behavior, mm. which involves your attitude, it involves your words, it involves your bodily actions. Mm. After that, Sama Achiwa is the fifth of the Eightfold Path, proper right profession, uh, means not uh, seek or enact professions which go against more, uh, the, more, the Buddhist precepts of moral virtue or which are deceptive or uh, thieving, thievery or any such dishonest profession. The sixth of the Sixth applied method of the Eightfold Path is Samawayama, right effort. Pian Chop, Kapian Naiti Si Satan, Samapatan Si Pian Naiti Si Satan, Samawayama, right effort means to make a sustained attempted constant effort to sustain a constant effort as well as one can uh, in the four samapadanas the right effort actually means to practice successfully uh, to apply the four samapadanas into one's life so what are the four samapadanas? The four samapadana, samapatansi, is one, uh, do not destroy the auspicious deeds of the past, your past auspicious deeds. Uh, the second one is, um, leave your past, your, uns your past unskillful acts or if you wish to condition yourself with the concept of sin, you are sinned. Uh, leave your sins behind. Rid yourself of your sins that you have already committed. Or your unskillful actions which have left you with nothing but regret and pain. I prefer that particular way of looking at it. But if you believe in sin as a thing, you can put in a pot or measure or that it's a real Dhamma, a real thing in itself that exists and uh, whatever you like I don't believe in that mm, but words are words worth and so the meaning of the word sin might be different in the minds of ten people it might have ten different meanings so it's not even really worth arguing or discussing uh, because it is Bajatang Vetitapo just like vipassana, meaning uh, you can only know through your own experience. Uh, somebody can tell you what a melon tastes like 
50 times, but you'll have an idea and make pictures and imagine something. You might even get something close with a good description, but if it's something you've never tasted, well, when you first taste a melon after having heard the description, you will probably find that it is nothing like the description for two reasons. One, because it's impossible to describe a taste of something that the person you are telling has never tried or seen. It is very difficult indeed. Uh, the only way you can really know intuitively and without words and just like the thing for what it is before anybody ever started using words and talking before humans on earth things were what they were but they didn't have a name like dog or bird they just were be they alive or be they objects but it was only when we came along and changed from our living with nature in the trees to becoming something which appears synthetic a synthetic society with a synthetic imaginary method of sustenance I am speaking about the thing we know as know of as the monetary system which is a numbers game using pieces of paper and metal which are practically worthless and in fact actually worthless but even on a representative or a symbolic level they're also practically worthless they used to say this can be exchanged or is worth its value in gold um, most countries don't have that promise on their banknotes anymore maybe I'll talk about that one day and why but that's not a to do with the enlightenment that is to do with secrets of this world but they're secrets it's maybe interesting to talk about them one day so we return to the eightfold path uh, right effort is followed by the seventh of the eight applied methods which is Samma Sati Sati those who study Pali or study Buddhism or have been to Sri Lanka, practice Buddhism or in Thailand will know Sati. Sati means, uh, well, if you fall into a dream and just drift off, you don't have Sati. Uh, to uh, keep wakefulness and mindfulness, awareness, focus, keep focused and uh, know what's going on around you more or less something like that sati means uh, acutely aware mm. uh, samasati right concentration no right uh, sati I don't remember the English translation for this been too long in Thailand but I think the correct translation is uh, right mindfulness um, right mindfulness alertness is a good word to sustain alertness which in Thailand uh, we would say Haraksa uh, Sati Sampachanya So Sati uh, might mean uh, mindful and Sampachanya means uh, sustained alertness so uh, don't drift off to really hold a sustained forced effort conscious effort to remain mindful and watchful and uh, register as much as one can of what is going on within and outside of oneself as it happens in real time I call it watching the heart in real time uh, which is tantamount for me to the practice of gamatana, gamat uh, vipassana gamatan, gamatana vipassana uh, which 
is more or less what the forest tradition monks practice. Mm. Vipassana, Kamatan. So Vipassana, insight meditation or mindfulness meditation. Kamatan, Kamatan, Gamma action, Tan, base, base of action. Applied method. Kamatan means a method of examining the Dhamma and realizing the Dhamma. So if you practice Vipassana Gamatan, there are meditative practices such as breathing exercises with mental focus, a combination. So uh, the right mindfulness, I will now abbreviate and uh, try and give a concise and clear explanation. So what is right mindfulness? consists of mm, you should not be concerned with how well others are doing or what's going on outside and whether it bothers you or not unless noticing that something is bothering you and you watch the bothersome feeling inside and investigate it and investigate where the bothered feeling came from that's okay, that's gamatana that's in investigation and uncovering the Dhamma, the truth, the true nature of things. Through asking pertinent questions and examining one's own mind within one's body, one's candas, one's perceptions, one's memories, one's feelings, sensations, one's uh, way of gathering information, interpreting, uh, concluding and making decisions based upon preference or uh, aversion like it, don't like it, don't care, want it, want it to not come anywhere near me, mm, like don't want it, don't want it is actually not, it's still wanting, it's still craving, mm. you can crave for something you want, but you can also crave not to have to tolerate being in the same room with that person, for example, uh, so you could say, I, I don't want to see that person, that's not wanting. Uh, but actually, you can turn it around, you can flip it around and say, it is wanting. It is wanting to not see somebody instead of wanting to see somebody. It's craving in essence, even though you can use a double negative and say it's not wanting. Mm. So this kind of uh, watching oneself inside, watching one's mood, uh, using the Dhamma, what one has learned till now, to date of the Dhamma, to check out if those Dhammas are true and can be applied to that which you are observing and uh, investigating, be it your emotions as they come and go and change and fluctuate be it your thoughts or the state of stressfulness or relaxed feeling which is in your body and mind and nervous system and heart in any given moment and to be watchful and mindful and persistently alert to not slip and keep watching what's happening, what is arising within oneself and ask oneself questions about it, which are dumb oriented such as, oh, is this impermanent? Is this dukkha? Is this, has, does it have a inherent self? Or is it non-self in nature? Or can one not find any kind of a self within this object? I am investigating. And so on. Whatever you learn about the teachings of the Buddha, you can check them out in your meditation when you are watching yourself inside and following the various phenomena and events which arise within you, be they emotions, be they thought bubbles, opinions, reactions, bodily sensations, sounds, perceptions of sounds, memories, tastes, perceptions of tastes, thoughts and opinions and reactions about the object which uh, those tastes or smells or sounds originated from 
and where one is conditioned to react with liking or dislike and get to know oneself within. This is the applied method of the Eightfold Path known as Samasati, uh, right mindfulness. So the eighth and final applied method of practice or applied effort to attain and maintain and sustain in your practice in this Eightfold Path is Samma Samati, right concentration, or as we say in the West, meditation. So Samma Samati, uh, in Thai we would say Tang Jai Man Chop, Tang Man means to um, focus your mind and to make it very solid, secure and focused and unwavering in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha or in the object of your faith if the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha are not your ob the object you are using or which is uh, apt or pertinent to your practice so you might not be Buddhist, you might use an image of Jesus I say all things can work because of the, the real transformation occurs within, within your mind, within your heart and it occurs only after you have accumulated the strength of effort to achieve that transformation. That comes after something else which I call uh, planting seeds, like planting seeds uh, cause creation or cause accumulation. So if you wish to attain a certain Dhamma or a certain uh, conquer a certain aspect of your own heart for once and for all then in fact one will have found fault with oneself in life I have many times, so I assume other humans have too, if you're honest with yourself and you look at your skillful and unskillful actions, you put your head on the pillow at night and you review your day, uh, how easily you sleep, how light hearted or heavy hearted you are, that will reflect how skillful or unskillful you were that day or that week or in that period that you have acted until you stopped to examine your deeds. So that is the measure. If you wish to know, does karma or the, the mental abstraction or the abstract concept which we know of as karma, does it exist really? Is it a thing which exists? Oh, uh, if you ask me, uh, I would say it is an immaterial Dhamma, so it does not have a form, it's not physical. In the material world it does not have a manifestation, but that it is a Dhamma, which is, it is not a Dhamma which is not, but it's immaterial, it doesn't have a form, so you will have a problem to put it in a box.